Okay, oh, so let me take away this. No more eco, right? Yes, there's an eco. Oh, probably because I'm, I'm hearing this on this. Okay. Is it, is it okay? Can you hear me well? Okay, cool. So that's, that was to show you the state of the art of a decentralized booking platform. This is just the first version. We are here in like 1998, let's say, booking.com. Okay, it's ugly, it's slow, it's, you know, a real, you know, office, like high street agency are, are still laughing about it, etc., etc. But this is the first version. Now, let's go to even the more basics about that, right? Uh, why is this possible? What, what are we looking at? Two, three minutes maximum five and then we start with the questions so the big news here is not that a new genius is born and this genius is me okay and it's gonna change everything and it's gonna save everybody from the ugly and evil otas that wouldn't believable that, that wouldn't be believable i wouldn't believe that myself the big news is is that the internet is improving that's more you know that's easier to believe uh, we've been living with the internet. We've been seeing the internet grow from a joke to something for just nerds to something which is now all over our lives in 25 years. And actually, this is something which is allowing us to keep working and meeting people online during this, this crisis, right? 25 years. In these last 25 years, the internet has done basically one thing, okay? And what did it do? It made it possible for me not to send a letter with a paper without writing a, with a pen on a paper and mailing this, this piece of, you know, dead tree in order to reach someone who could get the information. So it allowed me to send information very, very quickly and very, very fast. It started with text. It went on to images, sound and video. And it's really, really cheap because what we're doing right now, there's uh, many people connected. Uh, we are all over the world and it's basically free. That's what the internet has done. Free or basically free information sharing. Okay. Now the internet is learning to do three more things. Okay. That's what is changing here. It's learning to do three things. One thing is payments. The internet cannot do payments. When I pay you through PayPal or credit card, this is not the internet. The internet is only allowing companies to take care of this. So when I send you a payment or when we get a payment through Airbnb, we are actually involving at least a payment service, Airbnb itself, a couple of banks and Visa or MasterCard or whatever. So there's like four or five corporations in the middle to allow a guest to pay a host. And each of these people get a cut, okay? They get a cut and if they don't want you to be there, they don't want you to get this payment, they won't allow you to, but okay. So we have the, these intermediaries which control the, the transaction. This is one thing. And this costs money, right? Uh, 1%, 2%, 3%, uh, currency exchange on Airbnb is 3% on top of, of the payment. So it's it's not cheap, it's a few, percentage points on the transaction. So we have the, the guest who wants to book by place and to pay me, we have to involve other people who get money out of it. Then uh, we, with the new internet, we can manage payments with our corporations. And this is specifically uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum and other cryptocurrencies. Let's not make a mistake. These systems are not based on paying with cryptocurrencies these systems are allowing are going to allow any kind of payments okay uh, especially at the beginning is going to be through credit cards and as the time passes by we're going to use crypto more and more but we cannot wait for crypto to, to be widespread all over the world to be successful okay um, the other incredibly important thing is reviews which is trust we use airbnb and we use booking and the other platforms because we trust them. Uh, when I'm booking an apartment with, I see Richard here. 
I, I book a place with Richard. I don't trust Richard. Why should I send him the money? And he doesn't trust me. Why should he keep the apartment for me, right? So we need to trust each other. And we have a corporation, in this case, Booking or Airbnb, who's taking care of this. They, they are making this possible. Without them, it would be really hard. We used to do it before without them, but it was harder. And less people would use the systems because they had to trust and take some risk. Thanks to them, we don't take any risk anymore. Um, and thanks to them, we can look at the reviews. Okay, we look at the reviews. When I see reviews on Booking or Airbnb, I know that they are 99% kind reasonable, acceptable. There's always, you know, the, 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 the bad guy, the bad guest who leaves a bad review, but generally it's fine. You know, if somebody has 10 out of 10 on Booking, I'm fine, right? Now, if these reviews were managed by the seller, like by the website of the of the property manager of the host, I wouldn't trust them so much. Okay, the internet has learned to manage reviews without any company behind. So in the future, we're gonna look at reviews on the blockchain, which basically means on the internet, and say, okay, these reviews are reliable because they are on the blockchain. Nobody can change them. They are managed by a network of computers. Okay. Don't worry if this is hard to understand because we are not used to it. But let me give you an example. Uh, if you check the weather tomorrow and you check 20 different websites and all of them or 19 of them say it's raining, you trust the internet in this way because there's not one single person who can lie. It's kind of the same concept, very simplified. So payments, reviews, and the hardest one, which is farther away, is governance. We need companies like Airbnb and Booking and Expedia and HomeAway, et cetera, to take decisions on how to run these platforms. If you let you know, a group of people run these platforms, uh, they're going to mess it up in general because somebody needs to be there after the discussion has been done to enforce the decision. We cannot do that with the internet. The internet is great for discussing forever and never taking a decision. We have these forums, we have Facebook. We can discuss forever, but nobody can say, come in and say, okay, we decided to do that, let's do it. Nobody has the power to enforce that. With the new internet, we will be able to do that, okay? So, payments, we don't need corporations anymore. Re reviews, we don't need corporations anymore. Governance, we don't need corporations anymore. Actually, we won't need them. It's still early. What you've seen today is something which is working, but this technology is not there yet. It takes time. It won't take a lot of time. It won't take many, many years. It's gonna be it's gonna come and it's gonna come step by step, right? So these are the three big things. Just one last thing about reviews, and then we can go to the questions. Uh, today, if you have an Airbnb account with a thousand reviews, tomorrow you may wake up and those reviews are gone and your account is gone. We know it's, you know, it doesn't happen too often. It happens like probably every day, but not too often and the chance is very low. But the very fact that this can happen shows that we are not in control of the reviews. And for a company or an individual, reviews are an asset. If you've been working in, you know, 10 years in Airbnb, and your reviews go, you won't feel very well. You will be very, very upset. You've just lost a big chunk of your assets and good luck, you know, rebuilding them from scratch. With the blockchain, the reviews do not belong to any company. You can move them around. Actually, they stay in one place and they can be used by trips and a thousand other websites, okay? They don't belong to the website. You know the separation of state and church? Okay, it turned out to be a good thing and countries which are still with the church and the state are still together, they are backwards. Same thing, uh, the OTAs are not separating reviews and the corporation, okay? We're gonna do the separation of reviews and corporations. Reviews do not belong to the OTAs. There's not the right player to hold on them, okay? Perfect, so that's my introduction. Um, I already got, a few questions via email, but I want to give priority uh, 
to anybody who's here live. And while you ask me the, fir the first questions, I'm going to share with you our um, white paper. And I'll introduce the white paper. We've been working for like three months, a couple of years ago, together as a community to write the specifications of the best OTA we could imagine, right? And we wrote this white paper. And I think it's time to sit down with the industry and write again, improve it with more brain power. Okay, I'm going to just share it to you right now. So if you want, you can read it while, while we speak. So go ahead with the questions, guys. This is an AMA. Uh, AMA ask me anything. Um, some people told AMA, AMA was a new company or a new project. <laughs> it's not. It's just a way to say, I'm here to answer your questions. So let me see if you ask me questions. Can't hear anything. I can't answer to that. <laughs> OK. So Chris is, you know, is confirming that this happens on, on Airbnb quite often. Yeah, that pla it's called debt platforming. It happens a lot in terms of numbers, but they have such a huge number of listings and, and accounts that in percent is probably pretty low. I mean, we don't actually have a high risk of being kicked out. There's also the other concept, which is uh, shadow banning. Your account is still on, uh, but you don't get bookings. You don't know why. Uh, the algorithm has decided that you don't deserve bookings, and you you fell out of grace. And you don't even know about that. This is more you know, closer to what God would do to you. <laughs> OK, Daniela has lost uh, the Google My Business, the Facebook, and TripAdvisor um, a few times over the years. Oh, bad luck. And you had to restart with them. OK, well, the, what the new internet promises is that once you build a reputation on the new internet, that's, that's that forever. OK, nobody can take it away from you. No, Richard, you, the, I will never forgive you that. You started with a bad question, <laughs> the hard one. <laughs> but yeah, let's be fair. I said I, I would reply to, to all questions. So let, let's our, reply with, start with the, the really hard one. Uh, so Richard says, the elephant in the room and the one that is always asked is how to get exposure. And he says, of course, sorry, because he understands. He just stabbed me in the back. <laughs> Joking, Richard. Thank you for that. So. Um, Look, if you go in the white paper, we have about nine points, uh, nine different reasons for customers to go directly, which means go through trips rather than going uh, through Airbnb. And I won't go there right now. It's, it's, it's a long you know, explanation. And it is not really satisfactory. There's no way we can tell you today that if we launch this, we're going to get you know 50 percent of the the world share of of bookings what i want to say here the um okay very shortly of course you can get customers in all the traditional ways right you get funding and, and then you start trying to get customers and you feel you make fidelization and then it's cheaper for them so they come back directly etc cetera, etc cetera. but go in the white paper and you know, challenge those points. Maybe we're going to find new ideas. Maybe we realize some of those points don't work. But the point here is, the, uh, how do you measure the success of such a platform as Trips? Is it because Airbnb dies a day after we launch? Or is it because we start giving one little exit, one little way to release the pressure? OK, one, when you get most of your bookings from the OTAs and you are into this, what I, I, I start to call now an abusive relationship, if you have some bookings which come from elsewhere, which could be direct bookings, of course, that's what we can do now, or bookings through decentralized platforms like trips, then you have a little bit more negotiating power. And if you manage to steer your customers through these platforms, for example, by you know closing dates on the very high season on the OTAs and keeping them open only for your direct bookings and trips and other platforms, then you are negotiating a bit more with these OTAs. They 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 will know that they cannot push it as far as they can push it now. So let me go to the next question, Giardini Antonio. 
how it works, the exchange rate between crypto. I mean, we don't have a centralized value. Okay. Um, this is a technical question about how crypto works. Uh, just to answer very, very simply, uh, Bitcoin today is worth, let me see. I won't go too, too deep into that because it's, you know, it's a whole new area. Uh, it's worth uh, $6,800. And this is the price of Bitcoin. Um, it's the average of prices in different exchanges. That's all. You know that it's worth that money and you trust this, this price. It's a price discovery made by the market. Okay. So we do have a price. But let me introduce a concept. Uh, when you talk about using crypto for commerce, people say, well, but it's too volatile. If I get a Bitcoin, which is worth $6,100 today, and tomorrow it crashes to 3,000, I lose money. Well, that's a new industry and the solutions are coming up, right? There's a already a solution for this and it's called stable coins. There are a few coins out there, cryptocurrencies, which are always worth about $1. In our system, you probably seen there was one of them, it's called DAI, okay? The DAI is always worth around $1. It's been like this for the last two years. OK, so there is a way to use crypto and do not risk the volatility. Definitely. This has been solved. OK, and very important. This is not being sold by a company which, you know, um, raised money and now is trying to make money out of it. This has been solved in the Bitcoin way. People started working on it and they build the product and now it's out there. They have ways to monetize this, uh, but it's simply there. It's open source. OK, you can take the code they have and make an alternative. So I think I answer to this. Uh, you cannot allow the white paper. It's a PDF, so it's probably, let me see. I don't see if you are on a, on a mobile phone or something, but that's the link. That's, that's all I can tell you. Andrea, which is the role of the community in supporting the TRIPS platform? Okay. Uh, before I said the separation of state and church and separation of company and reviews, okay? And TRIPS works on a concept of separation of company and platform. When we, talk, we think about Airbnb, we are not thinking the Airbnb platform and the Airbnb company, right? They are the same thing. Now, we're going to separate this. You're going to have a platform which we cannot actually control. The company behind it cannot actually control. OK, it's decentralized. That's what makes it really powerful. OK, so our the role now I'm answering actually the wrong question. I'm answering the, the role of the trips company, which we open in, uh, in Estonia because of good blockchain uh, legislation. Uh, so you have uh, you have to think about the company, the platform, sorry, the company, the community and the platform. The community is anyone. Uh, once you get in and you start helping, at the end of the month, we're going to send you some tokens and that gives you ownership of the platform. OK. And the role of the community is to launch this project and then simply stay there and, and get bigger. The role of the company is actually to launch this thing. And once it's, it's going by itself, actually to get out of the picture, it's a bit like when people build the, the Internet, there is no Internet company which owns the internet, right? The people who built it, they made a foundation and now they have no say, all right? That's a bit the same thing we wanna, we're going to accomplish. We want people to know that if they get into trips, they own it. And there's no somebody behind you can turn it off or take decisions. That's not the case at the beginning. We still have full control at the beginning. I hope I answer uh, to your question, Andrea. Channel manager Maria is asking, how can I connect my channel manager across booking? Uh, it is still too early. What we show, what I've shown you here in this video, it's simply a work, uh, a proof of work. It actually works. Real money has been exchanged. So you can actually go into this platform and make a booking, but it's really early. There's, there's no channel manager uh, connections done yet. Once they are done, you're going to be able to use them. 
Let me, in the meantime, share you the link if you want to play with this platform. It's the Origin Protocol platform, and I'll probably tell you more about that if there are questions. Uh, Danila is asking the activity channel. I'm not sure what the activity channel is. Maybe it's the channel manager. Uh, if you could guys ask in English, I'm gonna answer in English anyway. So Giovanni. Yeah, I answered already, Giovanni. Uh, the question to Richard, yes. Uh, bad, I'm not sure what you mean getting back. If you don't get if you don't get the connection, I'm 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 sorry. There's nothing I can do because it's it seems that actually I'm I'm online and people can hear me. Can hear me, sorry. So go ahead with the questions, please. Um, there's going to be a, a recording. So if you miss it for any reason, you're gonna see you can see the recording. I see a few people writing, so I'll wait, otherwise I go to the questions that I have in the email. Uh, Francisco, yeah, we're gonna, you know, I was saying in the beginning, uh, we cannot hope to be to reach the masses if we don't accept visa okay so one idea at the beginning is to let the uh the, the owners to accept payments through credit cards through stripe or something and directly like it used to be in booking and later actually to to have this money go through the company supporting this and um, and still be managed through a smart contract in a decentralized way which means you don't have to trust us. But yeah, we will need to accept for a few years at least uh, Visa, MasterCard, and et cetera, okay? The thing is, once you accept the money, so every blockchain project, once you start dealing with traditional money, we call it fiat, because it's, ba it's based on faith, uh, you are introducing a third party risk, okay? In this case, the risk will be like the Visa um, will not accept your transaction for any reason. But because you have all the alternatives on crypto, we think this is pretty pretty stable. You know, Visa doesn't accept this transaction. Okay, we're gonna go through through Dai or through Bitcoin or whatever, right? Maria is asking if you can share Origin with my colleagues. You you probably have used the the app, the one I just linked. You can give them a way to access, yes. Uh, you have to share, now it's pretty technical, but you have basically to share with them the, the 24 words which represent your password. Uh, for any question I'm not able to answer deeply, uh, you can come in the Facebook page and ask them. You can come in our, let me share with you, Discord, which is our, um, our, working environment we have a telegram group let me quickly share with you a few contact points for later because i'm pretty sure i won't be able to um answer everything deeply enough um, but we're there we we help you there's many people volunteering on this so we're very happy to help you so this is telegram uh Discord, don't be scared if you see Italian text right and left, you can write in English. Um, Facebook page, and then we go ahead. So, no bank transfer. Well, in the same way as, as um, you know, cre um, credit cards, bank transfers can be part of it. It's just, it's just another payment method, and we can partner with uh, payment services again this is going a bit against our uh where we want to go to but we, we understand that this is needed so we are not ideological about that we're very open we want things to work we want think people to be able to book in a different way so yes bank transfer will be added okay andrea what about if a guest damages the apartment how can an host react or the opposite case if an apartment isn't the one as the guest booked. So if something goes wrong, um, I have to explain you the, the real magic of it. If you've seen the video, the money is being sent 
to the internet. We call it smart contract. The money of the guest is not being sent to the guest, to the host, and it's not been sent to trips. It's been sent to a, a, a software. And this software is waiting. Okay. Take it as an artificial intelligence. It's actually a very stupid software. It's very basic. Okay. Its power is not in, in the fact that it's complicated. Its power is that it's managed by many, many computers at the same time, and no one can, can, can fake it in a way. Nobody can uh, in, influence it. Right. So the money goes in this escrow, just like Airbnb does. Right. Good. Then the guest comes and everything is fine. The money is sent to the host. Right. That's the easy one. What if something goes wrong? Well, if something goes wrong, the guest has to say that something has gone wrong or the host. So the money stays in the, in the smart contract and then some people have to decide about the subject, about what happened. In Airbnb, you will go to the, uh, the claim service. I don't remember the name. Um, okay, well, the office which takes care of, of problems. In trips, you go to the panel and the panel is a group of people okay who judge controversies okay and these people are any one of us and all these people can judge they can see the pictures they can read the messages they can ask for video whatever and then they vote there's five of them the majority decides okay to do this work they are paid in uh, in crypto in, in trips so it's a bit like Airbnb, but it's not one person doing this all day. It's five people doing this maybe once a day, once a week or once or the people who do it more often are going to make kind of a job out of it. Um, and the advantage is that you have real hosts and real guests judging on the subject and the algorithm which chooses them. We try to choose a few of them from the very city where this happens. So they have local knowledge something often missing in the airbnb employees just you know judging stuff from the other side of the world not understanding the real situation there the the, the culture and whatever right so uh, and we may build this internally or we can use different systems there's a company in the blockchain space called Kleros, which does only this we could simply uh, use their software and maybe give our people to do that and our people will be the community or simply say you guys do it we'll see right um it's like adding a plugin that that's why this is also much easier to scale in theory okay so basically damages and claims will be managed and will they will be managed very carefully by uh, people who know what they're talking about and people who have a vested interest in the platform to work So I replied to the next questions from Francesco already. So Maria uh, Chiara has already um, downloaded the app and, and tried Origin, which is great. And uh, so she's giving a bit more in-depth questions. And this is, there's no place to set security deposit. So in, in the Origin platform today, you cannot define uh, security deposit, right? But if you go in our uh, white paper, then we have this. So the security deposit part is taken care of. You can read it. It's too long to explain now, but we thought about this because Origin is building the infrastructure. They are not experts in Airbnb. They are building software for marketplaces, and there's going to be the Uber, the Amazon, the eBay, and the Airbnb. Okay, so we are the experts of that, and that's why we are their partners for this vertical, which is, you know, vacation rentals. Um, we will have to build this on top of them, or they will build it. it. Doesn't matter. It's open source software. Very, very important. Every single line of code which is which is written in Origin protocol is open source. Every line of code we will write as trips is open source. If you are part of trips for a year and it works, but you want to change one, you can influence decisions Two, if we don't go the way you want, you can take the code 
and build another platform. And you can also invite all the listings to be present also on your own platform. So you're not stuck, you're not locked in with us. Whatever we build together is built for your own too. Yeah, you don't need to contact uh, Origin because they won't build this for you, the, the deposit. Uh, this is something they ask us, so they already know what is needed. Uh, we either are going to raise money and build on top of it, or they're going to build it. We don't know which way it goes. Uh, we are still waiting for that software, the one you are testing now, to be mature enough before we build stuff on top of it. Oh, I, I missed the question Alberto is, is referring to, which is how the algorithm works. Let me go back a moment. Maybe I missed other questions too. Oh yeah, Johnny, Johnny. Okay, let's uh, let's answer to Johnny and Alberto. So the algorithm, the algorithm is the the piece of software which decides who gets first, who gets second, who gets gets third. So um, the algorithms of Airbnb or or Booking or the other OTAs are maximizing for earnings okay they are trying to make as much money as possible and to do that they need to make conversions as high as possible they have a thousand people getting in they need to have as, as many bookings as possible and of the highest value as possible and that works their algorithms are uh, very efficient okay in i'm sure they will we won't reach that level for a long time okay uh, they are very good in, in putting together um, uh, guests and all requirements. But the interest of the company and the interest of the users, and by users I mean both guests and hosts, are not always the best. Okay, If you look at, they're not always the same. Um, if you look at Booking.com, how often Booking.com is offering you uh, hotels or apartments which are not actually the best for you, but are the ones which, for instance, are paying the highest commission. Booking does this, right? You have, uh, I don't know, 15% commission, and it tells you, you know, pay more commission, you're going to be higher. This is basically telling, it, it, it's basically showing to the guest the most expensive places because they pay more commissions, or places who are very, very little margins. This is not how you make, you know, you defend the interest of the users, you are defending the interest of the company. So what we will try to do here is to make more uh, fair algorithms, which actually are trying to make when you book a place to show you the best the best place for you, um, so that you know everybody is satisfied. We haven't gone that deep. We haven't written algorithm specifications. It may be fun funny for you to know that back in two thousand and five. I was writing, coding an algorithm for my own uh, booking platform. And I was actually putting all these uh, data points and, and weight. So try to put the people, you know, the, the best apartments on top. So I've been, I've gone through this. I'm sure what Airbnb or Booking are doing now is a total different science. Uh, and we're going to have to catch up on that. Okay, Richard, um, assuming growth, will trips be tradable on an exchange? Uh, definitely yes, if, if trip, trips works and it grows and people use it, then our token will go on some exchange, okay? But we are going a bit farther than that. Um, we are trying, now we're still in discussing with Origin. Because we helped Origin for a long time and they went trade, they went on the trading platforms. They are on Binance and other big platforms and they have actually a real price. So if you give me, if I give you a thousand Origin tokens, this is worth today maybe at $30 or something. So they are, they are worth money, real money. And they gave us some Origin tokens. You know, we have them, they are vested, they are blocked until next April, 
but we have origin tokens and we are discussing on connecting the origin tokens to the trips in saying for at the end of April next year, for every thousand trips you have, we give you I don't know, one origin token. That decision would make the trips tokens already have a price. Okay. So we're still discussing that, but we want to do that. Definitely. From zero to hundred, at what point is the development of trips? Okay. Um, very good question, Luca. Consider this: the internet itself. You know, consider how this stack is done. You have you have the internet. This is very much developed. Then you have the blockchain. In our case, is the Ethereum blockchain. This is not complete. This layer is still in very deep uh, development and still has problems. It's still slow and it's still expensive, as the internet was back in '98. It was very expensive to be online for hours and it was really slow. So we are there. We can't really build something very performant right now. Okay. So even the layer we are based on top is not ready. Origin protocol is built on top of, um, of Ethereum and Origin protocol itself is open source protocols, uh, a bit more technical. In internet, you will call them SMTP for email, FTP for file transfer. HTTP for web pages, etc. These are the protocols. They are open. They are open also in the internet. Open means nobody can steal them, close them, or whatever. They are there. They're going to be there forever. Origin Protocol is doing the same thing for this new layer, which is the blockchain. On top of them, we will build trips. Okay. So before trips is an app which you can just download and make a booking. And have all the features which are needed let's say even the basic features of course not at the level of otas i would say we are at 60 percent so it's still going to take time um, maybe next year we're going to be able to start using and get bookings but before we go mainstream maybe a couple of years maybe three maybe more we don't know that okay Okay, go ahead with, question, with questions, guys. I, in the meantime, I'm gonna look for the ones I received. Uh, you may, I got a few of them actually. So, Richard, again, uh, you are an experienced digital nomad and the current discussion is around longer stays, 30 or more days. So could the TRIPS community uh, position itself initially in the sector niche to generate a lawyer and enterprising client base and not to be seen as going ahead to head with the OTA. Well, Richard, you were on the stage with me in uh, in Como, at Antonio's Vacation Rental World Summit, where, where we were very lucky to be able to present TRIPS. You may remember it was called TRIPS Community for Digital Nomads and Tourists, okay? Um, because we thought, why just go after the, the OTAs? Let's do something they are not doing yet and airbnb or booking we're not doing the longer term bookings um but then we realized that the problem was in the airbnb actually airbnb has had a section which is called sublets airbnb.com slash sublets for years what was missing were the hosts the hosts were still focused on short term on you know tourism when we try to convince people to jump into this market, and I had done it already in Venice in 2017. I, I, you know, I transformed an apartment for digital nomads, and it was constantly booked for months at a time at very good rates. I was amazed to see that nobody would listen to me. Okay, uh, three years on, we needed, a, you know, a, a worldwide virus to convince people to move on to this. And yesterday, you've seen Airbnb has kind of declared, or you know, with, they're talking about going really deep and on, on longer term bookings so we are discussing to go back to to our origins and say okay it's, it's a good time now to go back to this of course we won't be the first anymore because you know it's it's happened but now hosts are going to change so the supply side will be there so definitely uh, but yeah, the, at the end, it's going to look like we're copying Airbnb, even if we haven't copied Airbnb, because we, we tried to do this much much before everybody else. But again, you know, what can you do? When you don't have the 
the the firing power of the big corporations whatever you do it just you know it just goes behind below the radar so i let you write the questions and i go ahead uh, with, with my questions uh, sorry, my the questions from people who send emails. So this is Chris Morgan from C, the CEO of IPRAC. IPRAC is a company which deals with uh, safety and trust. Okay, they kind of guarantee you that the, this host is uh, real and uh, reliable. And his only question was like, uh, well, I'm gonna read it to you. My only question is: current OTA provide hosts with a payment only when the guest has arrived. This is their way of advertising book safe and to prevent fraud. Although this model is flawed, or maybe it meant flawed in many ways. One, fraudsters still list and sit against legitimate listings, right? Fraudsters are able to trick people into stepping off the platform and communicating directly. Three, waiting anywhere between one week to six months to receive your payment does not work for hosts. To have monthly operating costs so from for my question is how will this new platform provide hosts to be paid on time on the time of booking and how will it prevent fraudsters li listing on the platform a platform where consumers know 100 percent the properties are legitimate and their payments are secured and the property will exist is key to any new form of booking platform okay good so First of all, if you go in our white paper, you will see that you cannot simply upload the listing and be a fraud, a fraudster. Every single listing will be approved by us. Okay. Uh, how do we approve it? The panel. So we as a community, every time somebody uploads a listing, we're going to check it as a community. And we're going to check, especially if it's not a new one, we're going to ask to show the OTA link. And uh, so we we'll look if this if this listing is is uh, is legit. Uh, this doesn't, of course, guarantee that this somebody is simply copying a listing. Um, we may go a bit deeper, or we may partner with companies like IPRAC, uh, who for a, for a charge will say, okay, every listing, every host who wants to have the, you know, the, the quality stamp. Uh, will pay IPRAC to, to, to prove that it's a real one. Or if you don't want to, you do like it, you do an Airbnb, you just upload it, and then you try, when you try to trick people, something else happens. So, first of all, uh, in our case, in our platform, you can put your phone number, you can put your email address, you can put your website, you can put your Airbnb address, okay? Uh, we leave it to guests to take the level of risk they want, okay? People will be, um, will be kind of, uh, sorry, um, they will fall into traps in the same way as they fall into traps in Airbnb or, or any other platform. Uh, we think it's up to them, okay? There's a platform, uh, people try to skip Airbnb because it's expensive, basically, because trips is not gonna be expensive. Uh, Few people, fewer people will try to get out of the platform. And when somebody in trips comes in and says, I want to get out of the platform, uh, you as a host will say, why? You know, it, it's really, really cheap. It's much easier. Or when you book in trips and the host says, let's do it out of the platform, you're going to say, well, why? So the, the risk, you know, the, the, the red flag will be much higher. Still, it's a war where people have to learn, you know, um, every decentralized system is less safe in general than a centralized one. Okay, uh, email is is less safe than than WhatsApp in a way because you get spam, but they have different roles. Okay, uh, on the same time, somebody could say, okay, I like this, but I don't like the fact that it's not very, very, very safe for the guests. Well, take the code, take the listings, and build a safer version. We will not beat Airbnb alone. A thousand different platforms based on the same code and the same reviews will beat the OTAs, okay? In the same way as a thousand blogs, a million blogs beat the newspapers. There wasn't one blog which 
simply made the New York Times, you know, made life out of business. Okay, that's the same concept. And then about payments. Well, in our case, again, you see this in the white paper. Uh, payments are released about a week after. Okay, the week gives us. I won't go too into detail, uh, too much into detail, but it gives us the time to be sure that the money has to be sent. So. Uh, no, we don't think the money should go to the host early. One big mistake, and this big mistake has been done for the last 20 years. Let's do our own platform, the host say. Let's do our own platform, the hotel say. Let's not book in that platform, the guests say, because they are doing everything thinking from their own way. The only way to build a real platform, a working one, and this has been proven by the OTAs, is to be in the middle to find the perfect balance between the, you know, what the guest needs and what the host needs. You cannot make a platform made by the host or by the guests. And let me finish with a question. Okay, I, I answered the questions, uh, Chris, um, Chris questions. Thank you, Chris, for that. Uh, Andrea, do you think that trips could expand to hotels or remain only apartments? And as Richard says, only for tourism, also for long-term rent. Um, you know, in the last year or so, we the, the 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 line between vacation rentals and hotels is blurred, and and now we have this new big thing, which is longer stays. Uh, it's called hospitality. I think we're going into that direction, in which you know uh, anybody who offers hospitality can offer it, but Building a platform is difficult. Building something which works is really, really difficult. So we have all the expertise we need to build a vacation rental platform. We have it for longer stays. We do not have it for hotels. Hotels are a different beast. Okay. So maybe we start from what we know. And then as the, plat as the platform grows or the community grows, people from the, from the hotel industry will come in and they're going to start writing code, suggesting specifications, building integrations. It's open. So you don't need to ask permission to write some code and propose it to the to the community. Then the community accepts it, accepts it or refuses it. So it's really open. It's conceived by to, to grow wherever the market wants it to grow. Or you know a big hotel community takes the code and builds the version for hotels. Who knows what's best? Will it be the big decentralized OTA against the big centralized ones? Will it be a thousand or 10,000 different platforms? Will it be direct booking websites, like the normal websites using smart contracts for payments and reviews? That's another question. This has come out like the last month. So why, do, why won't people simply keep their own website, but the payments are done through smart contracts Reviews are guaranteed by the blockchain, and I can book in a normal website without all these uh, doubts I have today. We don't know where this is going. In the same way as we didn't know where the internet was going. When the internet started, everybody knew commerce would go on the internet. Everybody could imagine Amazon. That was easy. Okay, they actually started with building shopping malls, like virtual shopping malls, and then you could click and you go and you went into the shop. It didn't, that didn't work out. But Amazon became the biggest you know, shopping mall of the world at the end. Who could guess, who could foresee Facebook and social media? No way. That was beyond our imagination. We don't know where this is going. We start from what we know, but we really have to stay open. This will go in directions we cannot imagine. Well, Richard says, I love blockchain reviews concept because that's actually what we realized last year. Um, yeah, blockchain is good, you save commissions. Uh, blockchain is good because you're not under the control of the OTA. But the biggest problem with the OTAs today is that they own the OREO reviews. And if you are a very good host of property managing in Airbnb and you open booking.com a booking.com account, you are at zero reviews. Why can't you bring those reviews there? Well, because Airbnb doesn't want you to, right? 
So it's your own reviews, but they, you cannot take them. That makes any new incumbent, any new uh, startup wanting to do something better than Airbnb and Booking, they can't even start, okay? And that's why I say every day a startup in the vacation rental business is dead before even being born. You can't even go to an investor or to an, an incubator and say, I'm going to go against Airbnb. They say, it's just too big. And they are right, okay? Because they are, they have built these monopolies. And I go farther. They are like in a cartel already. Maybe not explicit. But why after this COVID-19 crisis and disaster, etc., nobody talked about lowering the commissions? I mean, come on. We are dying. Businesses are dying. Your partners are dying. Okay? No, they are closing. Why don't you say, okay, guys, for a few months, less commissions? No one. There is a cartel, in my opinion. They took decisions. Some things are not to be even discussed. Okay. Uh, hi, Miguel. Uh, what's going to be the revenue model of Trips Company? The revenue model of Trips Company is the following. Uh, we will try to raise money uh, with a crowdfunding or through investors. Okay, we are we got very close to um, Origin Protocol, which is based in Silicon Valley, and they raised thirty-eight million dollars through, you know, the classic investors. Uh, in their in their midst, there are founders, co-founders of PayPal. Um, one founder is sorry, one one investor is the one of the founders of YouTube. So the big the big names are are with them and. They said they're going to help us to raise money there. We were go almost going to start, and then the COVID-19 started. So we said, OK, let's wait. Let's see what happens. So we're going to try to, to raise money um, to have a company which is uh, has enough funding to be there in the long run, OK? Not the classic startup which needs to burn money fast or die. Um, so the company itself will not have a revenue model in the sense that we try to make money. The company has to survive for as long as it needs to, okay? What the investors buy actually is the tokens because the tokens represent the value of the company, of the platform, right? So if the platform is successful, the tokens they paid one are gonna go to two and they made two X or they're gonna go to 10 and they made 10 X. This is how most of them invested in origin this is how most of them invest in blockchain projects. If you want to go deeper into this concept, it's called tokenization. Um, it wants to change the way things work because as Airbnb was fun funded, it was funded by venture capital and venture capital are going to get richer. But what about the first 100 Airbnb hosts in New York who made this possible? They're making less money than they used to make at the beginning. And they are the ones who made it poss this possible. They've been completely forgotten, right? With tokenization, if you are one of the first 100 hosts, if you are one of the first people who help the project, you get tokens. And we have about, I think, 80 people today got our tokens in exchange for work. And if this, if this is successful, you already have the tokens that are going to have value. It's kind of like sharing giving shares from day one to everyone who helps, even for one hour. And the revenue model of the TRIPS platform is the same. We try, we're going to charge 5% on every booking, and this money comes in, and we use it to run the platform, okay? There's no concept of profit for the company or profit for the platform. The profit is there, but it's for everyone who participates. So. It's not a socialist thing. It's about making money, all of us. The first profit you have as a host is that you pay less commissions. Maybe you're going to save 10,000 euro a year in commissions. And the profit for the guests is that you save money in the booking, right? But then you also have the tokens. And these tokens will absorb the value of the platform. Instead of giving the money as dividends, it kind of goes in the tokens. And then you can sell them or use them for booking. Okay, uh, question of Miguel again. Um, what are the key talents you need to make this a reality in the coming years? Well, at a certain point where 
the, the layer of Ethereum is kind of stable and it solved the problem of scalability. So it's fast and cheap or some other, some other blockchain project. We are not married to Ethereum in any way. And when Origin is, um, is stable enough, we are going to start developing our own specific features. So we're going to need developers at that point. Uh, because we're still building the system, it's mostly about development. Uh, we have a business plan which we took away. I'm sorry, we took it away from um, from our website because since the COVID-19, it's, it's aged years in days. So we took it away. But if you want to see our business plan, we I could share it. Let me see if I can share it now. That's that's all the where, where you get all the answers. Give me a second. Uh, I'm going to try to share it right now. Again, I shared, I shared this uh, PDF. You can see the our business plan. It's already old. It's gonna it's gonna change. It's gonna sorry. We, we are gonna rewrite it. Uh, not now. We, we still need to know how how everything is gonna go in general. And um, yeah. But if you wanna have a look, sorry, I should have saved this. Uh, Sorry, I don't have it. I'm going to share it later in, in the in the YouTube um, video, which I'm going to share. Sorry about that. Uh, Christina, there was a call for crowdfunding offers when would trip start collecting money. So we 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 did the call the call for crowdfunding and we raised um, um, uh, promises, pledges for almost everything we were going to raise. We we're going to raise a very little bit, like hundred thousand euro, up to two hundred, and then we started asking to you know platforms like crowdfunding, crowdfunding platforms and after one refusal because we are blockchain or because we didn't have enough social you know followers we decided that well we need first to grow the social followers the trick with us is that we are not offering an easy thing to understand we're not offering a solution today we're offering you a problem okay because you want a solution you want an OTA and if I could tell you, yeah, just use this one, it's going to work. We're going to have millions of millions of people following us. But what we tell you today is, uh -uh, today you have to help us. You have to work hard. Maybe you have to put some money if you want. There's no solution here, only problems, OK? I don't know who promised. No, it's sweat and tears, uh, blood and tears, OK? That, that's, that's trips today still. Um, and only a very, very small subset of the population wants extra trouble in their life <laughs> these are the people who actually are intellectually very very curious because this is really a fascinating rabbit hole and so we, we're finding a bit hard to um grow our social you know it's easy to get ten thousand followers in twitter if you write bullshit you know if you start writing stuff focused on getting followers you get them but we would like to go organic we don't want to attract the, the wrong kind of people today okay because these also are they're gonna make a lot of noise and, and confusion we're really working hard so that's what we're gonna do uh yeah chris i'm gonna i'm gonna send you the link you can try this is the orange protocol proof of concept i would say it does work you can upload an apartment you can do a booking you can actually pay real money crypto for, for the moment so it's it's real it's there and it's decentralized it's all on the blockchain but it's not ready for the masses. We're very far from that. So let me go to other questions. Um, there's Fedor from Clean BNB. He's asking me if our token, okay, it's the same question, if it's gonna be on, on exchanges. Yes, it's gonna be on exchanges. And he asked me why only 5%? Well, 5%, it's the minimum we could think of to have enough money to make this run uh, we don't need to run servers okay so it's, it's cheaper 
uh, we are not going to, well, basically, we don't try to get as much money as we can. And the 15%, 18%, 20% the OTAs get is as much as they can get today. And it's probably going to grow if they, if they realize that, for instance, we have made our operations leaner. We, we've done, I don't know, self check in, which makes it cheaper. Then they're going to get this extra money from us. So their focus is maximizing commissions. Our focus is minimizing commissions. If we find a way to make it 3%, we're going to do 3%. The point is today for a host or a property manager, five or three or four, it doesn't really change because they're paying already 20, 25, right? So we started with five, but we're gonna, our aim is to actually bring it lower if it does make sense. We may be forced to increase it if 5% is not enough. We don't know, right? Uh, advertising, Chris, it's still too early, and maybe you weren't here. If you go in the in the uh, white paper, you will see how we plan to capture or intercept, or I would say force guests to leave the OTAs. We can force them if we close the calendars, and no, you, you go to London and there's nothing available or very few available apartments in a certain date, well, you're going to have to leave. And we may be forced to tell guests, we're done with that. You want to book? You have to come over this way, okay? Which could be direct booking, trips, or another thousand decentralized platforms. Another question. Okay, that's another one. Replied already. Yeah, somebody's saying, how are we going to do with reviews? There are people, some guests are really unfair. Well, look, every review can be, um, can be challenged and the panel will judge on it. In case of reviews, uh, you're going to have to put a little bit of money in case, you know, if it's free, everybody's going to challenge every non-perfect review. And if you lose, you're going to lose the money. If you win, you're going to have the money back. Uh, there's always the unfair guest. If you have 100 reviews, one unfair guest won't really kill your business, OK? And that's going back to the algorithm question. We won't give, and I, I think even the OTAs do not give too much weight to the odd bad review in the middle of 100 good ones, right? They shouldn't do that. It's, it's a blip on the radar. It shouldn't be considered. Another question. OK, that's been answered already. Let me see. I see Chris was writing something. OK. Uh, so Chris, for me, I would add my listing as another listing site. Uh, now, I'm not sure what you mean, but that probably you mean, you know, it's just another website. I'm just going to upload it there, see, see what happens, right, maybe. Uh, but uh, what, what we are hoping is that once you start getting bookings from trips and you realize that either your guests paid a bit less or you made a bit of money or both, you, you made a bit more money and the guests paid a bit less, you're going to say, and you get a review which belongs to you for the first time in history, after one, two, three, ten of them, you're going to say, why the hell am I gonna, I'm getting bookings from... Uh, booking or airbnb because they don't build any safety for me they are ephemeral they could be gone tomorrow my account could be gone tomorrow right or the algorithm in booking changes and i get no more bookings and maybe they are going to ask me things i don't want to do right i want bookings on the blockchain because they're not trips bookings they are on the blockchain they are internet bookings okay and you're going to try you're going to try everything you can to make bookings go through trips or other similar systems in the way in the same way as you try everything you can to get direct bookings okay um how the panel works again uh, go in the in the white paper is explained pretty much into detail but basically let's visualize this uh we are all guests and we are all hosts in, in this platform we have our app on the phone and 
some of us will say, you know, I want to be a judge in the panel too. And you press a button and you just forget about it. And then some issue happens and <clears throat> the algorithm is going to send 100 requests for judging to 100 phones. And the first five people, the fastest ones, who reply, they can get the job. From that moment on, there's a clock. Uh, um, the clock starts ticking and you have 24 hours to decide, let's say, right? Uh, there's going to be three hosts and two guests, and maybe three of these people are from the same city, okay? The money is stuck in the smart contract. No one in the world can move it. The smart contract has one simple, two simple instructions, time-based and input-based. Time-based means if after seven days nothing happens, release the money to the host, okay? Mine, there's no server there. There's no one server. There's a 1,000, 5,000 servers. Nobody can do this, okay? Nobody can change this. Only the time, the clock can say, release the money. Or the smart contract is expecting some input from, from the panel and the panel judges. And five people are gonna, after 24 hours or before, after judging the concept, sorry, the problem and seeing the pictures, etc., and asking questions, they say, okay, I think the host is right. I think the guest is right. I think the host is right. Majority, a majority is, is, is four, and let's say it says send the money to the host. And one simple bit of information goes to the smart contract, and the smart contract sends the money to the host. That's the concept. It's much more, you know, it's much more difficult than that. It's the things we didn't think about, probably. It's probably flowed. It's a first step. But as I was saying, there are companies who concentrated just on clean management, dispute management on the internet. And they will do that as a service too. Oh yeah, Chris, of course, you're gonna not be only in trips. No, that would be crazy to be only in trips. Uh, actually, what's probably gonna happen, what I hope is gonna happen is that after trips, there's gonna be another one and then 10 more and then a hundred more and you decide which ones are bringing the right kind of customer to you. Because today, when you are on the OTAs, it's like everybody should be a customer. You cannot discriminate, right? You cannot say, well, the, my place is for families. And then a group of young people writes, and well, you know, kind of you manage to, to refuse them, but not really, right? Like for booking is the right booking. So uh, you are going to be able to prof to make a, a specific profile of your kind of customer and just get the customers you want, which makes your business, your operations, so much easier. Christina says, how can the panel value the refund for a damage to the apartment? Well, it's, it's kind of the same way Airbnb does, right? Somebody takes a decision. Uh, this time the decision is taken in, as a group. Uh, and we hope that because the group knows more about this business, because the group is closer in the location, they, they are able to, to take a better decision. There are going to be bad decisions. That's guaranteed, okay? In the same way as there are bad decisions in Airbnb. But look what happened in Airbnb. They were very, very happy to refund hosts and then they were not then they were very very happy not to refund hosts and to say the guest is right so what happened well what happened is that at a certain point hosts there were too many of them of course it depends on the market but that's a general thing too many hosts not enough guests they need to keep a balance and they started saying okay keep the guests happy and we noticed this as hosts that even in situations where we were right, we didn't get any refund, okay? Again, because the interest of the platform is not aligned with our own. They want to make money. They want more guests, okay? In our case, we are going to probably be more fair. We don't have this kind of politics at play. How many people are booking now using blockchain? I would say virtually no one. There's a few websites out there, blockchain-based, hybrid blockchain-based. There are bookings, but, you know, in the hundreds. But it's a kind of like if you're really purely blockchain, 
like not even credit cards, you basically get very, very few bookings. If you are blockchain powered for some aspects and everything is much more similar to, um, to how booking or Airbnb work, then you get more bookings, but it's also, you know, the, the guests and the hosts have less control. They're still working through a company. Uh, it's really early. It's, it's like, let's say it's like booking.com when they just launched or pre-launch. Okay. No one knows about it. Everybody knows about the blockchain, but they don't know what it is and no one is on it. Right. And it's still too uncomfortable and still too slow. Uh, it's, it's still not usable. We're still not there. Okay. Cool. I think we passed the time and people have left already. Um, let me see if I have another, if you have another question, go ahead. I have no problem in going, in going on a little bit. Let me see. I have a question here. Yeah. Somebody asked me about Airbnb plus, which is asking for, um, exclusivity and well, good luck with that. If you are an Airbnb and you are an Airbnb plus and you have, they have exclusivity on your listing and they did your own listing and they own your customers and well, you're basically working for them. So it could be a good strategy. You know, you don't have nothing to worry about. Just welcome the guests and make money. I don't say it's a bad idea, but you're not working for yourself. You're basically working for them because you have no assets. Every no, no digital assets. Your only asset is the house. The moment you're out of Airbnb, you have a house and then you start over. Okay, no more questions. I answered the questions I received via email and uh, thank you so much. I think the next step, and let's see if there's enough traction for this, is to meet again uh, somewhere online, do some webinars and start discussing the white paper and improve it. It's already pretty solid, but the environment has changed, the technology has progressed, why don't we write together the perfect white paper and then we go on to building something like that? Oh, can see the white paper. Let me see if my link is there. There you are. If you can't see the white paper, just go on tripscommunity.com and there's a link, a link on top. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone. Good luck with, with everything and uh, see you. Bye. Bye-bye.